Hi there, I'm Lee Brainerd. Welcome to Soothkeep. Today I want to encourage your hearts with another rapture nugget. We're going to look at the topic, the desire of the nations. An amazing passage that many don't understand is Haggai 2.7, where we read, I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Technically, this is a second coming passage. We, we see here that the Lord is going to shake the nations in the tribulation, and then the day of the Lord is going to come, and then the desire of the nations shall come, even Jesus. Then the glory of the Lord shall fill the temple. Practically, the church gets to enjoy the coming of the desire early, for we meet the Lord in the air prior to the tribulation. Revelation 3.10 says, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So how is Jesus the desire of the nations? He is the desire of the nations because he is the embodiment and ultimate source of every basic human desire that gnaws at the heart of man. Every human being has a vast, deep need for love. We are infinite love sponges. And we seek this love from our spouse, from our family, from our friends, from our neighbors, from work, from community. And to the degree that we lack love, we feel crushed and broken. Now, when we find the Lord, we find the love that we crave and need. And when he comes, all of our spiritual family for all of eternity, as well as all of our workmates for all of eternity, and all of our neighbors for all of eternity, will be fired by his love. Peace has been the cry of mankind for many centuries. Peace in the family, peace in religion, peace in politics, peace between countries, peace between towns. We long for the stability and calm of peace. Now when we find the Lord, we find a deep inner peace that the world cannot give and cannot take away. And when he comes, this peace will be disseminated to the entire world. There will be no more religious or political or national strivings, no more war, no unresolved differences among family and friends or nations. Mankind also craves faith and trust. It's hard to have relationships in your family or with your neighbors or with your friends or at work or with the government if you can't trust them. We as human beings need to be able to trust people around us. We need to trust that they have our best interests at stake. And that failing, we need to at least trust that they're not going to intentionally hurt us. Now, when we find the Lord, we find a rock of Gibraltar that we can trust. He will never have less than our best interest at stake. He will always be patient and gentle, and he is unchanging, and his mercies fail not. The more we lean on him, the more we learn that we can trust him. And when he comes, society will be marked by his character, and all of our human relationships in every aspect of society will be marked by trust and confidence. We will trust all of our neighbors and all of our neighbors will trust us. Human beings also need hope. Hope is what helps us to keep going, to keep trying, to keep giving, to keep loving. There is no brokenness like those without hope. Without hope, people die inside. But when we find Jesus, we find a living hope who holds out to us the glories of eternity. And we can rest assured that our sufferings and trials down here are not in vain. And they are not the beginning and ending of human existence. We know that no matter how awful our circumstances are down here, we have hope. We have certainty that our circumstances down here are temporary and will pass. And when he comes, we will have an infinite weight of glory revealed to us. Now, while we talk about passing from hope to sight, this is talking about the hope of eternal life 
Not hope in every sense. In my understanding, I believe that in eternity, every new adventure and every new endeavor that we plan will be characterized by glorious hope. We'll have a glorious certainty that our adventure, our, our endeavor will be somewhere between amazing and insanely awesome. There will be zero disappointment or let down in eternity. Now, people also require happiness and joy. We need people in our life that bring joy. We need possessions in our life that bring joy. We need activities to do that bring joy. And the less that we have of these things, especially people, we grow empty. Ah, but when we meet the Lord, we find a source of happiness and joy that never fails. And no matter what earthly circumstances bring, when the Lord comes, we cease to drink from the stream of joy in the wilderness, slaking our thirst in the barren desert of the world. And we find ourselves in a sweet eternity, forever enjoying the joy of the giver and the joy of his gifts, in glorious harmony, without measure or end. Humans also earnestly desire righteous government and laws. Now, government in theory keeps man ordered for the best general blessing amongst the whole of society. But government tends to gravitate toward blessing one class of society at the expense of the other or the others. The government pendulum tends to swing from one extreme to the other. And this is why there are continual changes of government in the world. And every one of these changes is a confession that the world needs Jesus. Getting rid of yet one more out of balance government and policies that favor some at the expense of others is a testimony that we need Jesus. Now under every government on the planet today, some of the population, at least, and sometimes most of it, suffers because the government is working against their best interests. But when we meet the Lord, we align ourselves with a government that works for our best interest 24-7, 365. What a treasure it is to know that he who lives to be our king once died to be our savior. Now when the Lord comes, we will enjoy and share in a government that will provide directed blessing to the entire world without favoring any class. Not the upper class, not the middle class, not the lower class, not the working class, not the wealthy. It will be true equality for the first time in human history. Now men and women also need rewarding work to do. Without it, they begin to feel like a hamster on a wheel, running their buns off while racing to nowhere. The fact is, the happiest people on the planet are those whose work and whose life passion coincide. And they feel like they are making a difference in meeting needs. Now, most people on earth are just grinding life out one day at a time in a job they tolerate at best and maybe hate. They're doing that job because they have to make a living, not because it's what their heart finds passion and in, in, in enjoyment in doing. Now, when we find Jesus, we find something profitable to labor at that offers infinite reward for our finite efforts. Being a disciple is the best job on the planet. But when the Lord comes, every individual will find a rewarding work field that thrills his soul and fulfills his deepest desires for the pursuit of excellence and purpose and meaning. Now, mankind also longs and labors to remove the curse from nature. Mankind labors against the curse like plant diseases and animal diseases and human diseases and fires and floods and storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and volcanoes and animals that are pests and weeds as pests and insects and rust, oxidation and mold and wood rot and algae and a whole host of other things in their train. These problems rob us of gains and cost much time and effort and headache. Now, when we find the Lord, we realize that the current disarray of nature is temporary and that the curse will be lifted, and this buoys our hearts with hope. 
Because when the Lord comes, nature will thrive at a level we can hardly imagine. No matter what your interest in nature is, whether the forest or deserts or lakes or oceans or the Arctic or the jungle or the swamps or the lagoons or coastal seaways, you will be continually wowed. And no matter your area of interest in agriculture or horticulture or animal husbandry, the land will flow, overflow, with milk and honey and bumper harvests. Mankind also longs to remove evil from the world. Anyone can look around the world and see evil. Moral evil, political evil, religious evil, educational evil, criminal evil. And man dreams and schemes about removing this evil, but every human effort to remove evil always results in a different evil rearing its ugly head. Man is just simply incapable of fixing the problem. But when we come to the Lord, we learn that there really is true good in the universe and that true good is coming to this planet and that true good is a person. God manifests in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what a thrill this truth is. And we learn as a believer to tap into his goodness to help us to be a small source of goodness in a world of badness. And when the Lord comes, he will remove all political, religious, moral, and economic evil. Evil will not be tolerated at all in the world. All the ungodly and all ungodliness will be removed. There will be no meanness, no crime, no stealing, no cheating, no lying. So in conclusion, the Lord is the desire of the nations, though they don't know it. He wants to satisfy their every human longing. In their ignorance and unbelief, they chase foolish things down foolish paths, seeking to fulfill these desires. And their pursuit of fulfillment on their terms leaves them empty and discouraged. May hungry seekers tune into the fact that Jesus offers them all the deepest heart desires of mankind. And for those of us who are believers, we have tasted of the goodness of God and the blessings that are coming some sweet day, and we long for that day like a thirsty man in a desert. We long for the day when we exchange the foretaste of his goodness for the infinite eternal inheritance in an infinite utopia, in the presence of the giver and his gifts, where we will be fulfilled on every level, in every aspect of life, in every way that man can be fulfilled without a single downturn of disappointment. Well, folks, I hope this message proves to be a blessing to you. Eyes wide open brain engaged, heart on fire. We'll see you next time.